You know, I have this theory that dreams are just a neurotransmitter byproduct. I actually don't think. But there's two, there's two, there's one theory, right, that dreams are incredibly narrative and that you're sorting out um, emotions and conflict and, and, and you're putting yourself back on an even keel and that dreams have clairvoyant right, properties and that, that the narrative of dreams have amazing power. Then there's another thought that dreams are just there to create anxiety and fear that produces the neurotransmitters that let you reorganize your long-term memory and give you the little chemical bonds so it'll stick. I'm kind of in that camp. <laughs> I don't want to sound cold and heartless, but when I read that I thought, oh my god, all that stuff with dreams all these years? What if it turns out that it's bonk? <laughs> so I've asked, I've gone to the, I've gone to, so I've, I've met, I meet a lot of neuroscientists, and I, and I hang out, and so I've asked them, and they say, you know, they say that with the whole, and he says, and then you'll, um, it's controversial. So some of the neuroscientists will go, you know, I believe that too, and I'll talk to, you know, my friend who's, you know, this expert in, you know, you know, and he'll say, and then he'll turn around and say, I had this dream last night, what do you think it means? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm just wondering, so you've been doing this for 21 months, roughly. Yeah. There has to be, at some point, you must recognize repeating patterns where seemingly little things, like you eat broccoli, 10 days later, you have an incredibly good mood, it gets charted, followed by a crash or whatever. I mean... Yeah, can, you, can I put... I think it's... I haven't... I think if you actually had some software, a little bit of linear programming, you could start to actually see what's connected to what. It's hard when you just look at it to know. But as an artist, you see the patterns, you're charting it, and you've got that intuitive ability to see yeah. the variation. So have you learned something that's amazing that you can share? I could show you my sleep numbers for while I was installing this week. I like, didn't get a sleep score above 50. Like every night, you think how does I was operating on nothing? Yeah. yeah. Um, I understand your question. Yeah. I mean, part of, yeah, there's still some randomness to it. I, you know, you're not. We're not a machine. Sure. Um, and I don't think broccoli is going to fix us completely. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're this complicated little cocktail. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm really fascinated by this idea of having a reflection of ourselves being soothing. And I'm wondering for yourself, is the accountability that you have this tracking ever oppressive? What was the last part? Is the accountability that you have in this self monitoring, is it ever oppressive? Oh, is it um, oppressive? Oh my, like, I just ate, I don't know, a gallon of ice cream. And now I have to track it. <laughs> or like, I don't know, I, um, I, yeah, so like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so, so is it ever oppressive to self-track? But yeah. the idea of an identity or, or watching yourself has some, um, you know, I think you have to get to the part where it's not so judgmental. Um, you, you, you just can't be good all the time. I mean, I really try, and you just can't. <laughs> You just can't be um, I don't find the tracking oppressive because I don't sit and write it down so much. So much of it's automatic. So I might measure my sleep and sort of notice the score. And when I've been working for the last few weeks in the studio really, really hard, I'm not getting that many steps in because I'm putting all my strength into standing in the studio and getting work done during the day. So I'm not moving so much, but I'm tired at the end of the day. Um, and do I beat myself up over that? No. Um, I think, I think a lot of the messages get sort of programmed into us young as to what you're supposed to do and somehow if you're measuring you're going to reflect back something unpleasant to yourself. I think over time that will start to go away and it will just be what it is. Because uh, there was another, I've had somebody else, there was another friend ask me and he says, oh God, what if you're psychotic or you know, what if you're really angry, do you want to see yourself reflected. And then somebody asked me once, he says, well, what if you really are having a hugely stressful, depressing anxiety? What if I could put you in the data patterns of somebody that's a little more positive? Could their mood 
in, you know, in their patterns, you know, repair you. There was a whole bunch of artists in the 1930s that thought you could use graphics and data for healing. Um, uh, oh, I blanked on her name. Uh, I put it on my blog. It's a few months ago. But the idea that um, that what you're tracking, I think of things, if you're having stress and you see that you're stressed, I actually find that more soothing than trying to um, ignore it and, you know, Sometimes when you're mad or angry, you just need to be mad for a little while. So the idea that you're reflecting something that's accurate, it's like mirror neurons, is you're seeing you know, an experience and playing back to yourself. I, I mean, I understand the question about it feeling like overwhelming. Um, and there's probably an amount that you can take at a time. So, yeah. Um, I have a question about the visualization. Yeah, her question was, you know, is it intuitive or am I using an algorithm? How am I producing the actual patterns? You know, I've got a friend in New York, and uh, he's a really great software developer, and we've been talking about coming up with, you know, almost a little bit of a random algorithm that produces pattern based on um, uh, kind of a set of standards, sort of a, like a rules-based system. And so I've been thinking about how do I create a rules-based system that is repeatable, right? So if you've got data, you, it's not going to produce the exact same thing every time, but it would create a pattern. So it was like, how can, um, you know, how can I test out the theory of this with the idea of an algorithm that will eventually come. So w what I've been doing is I, um, for the walks, I come up with kind of a, a scheme. The sleep, I came up with kind of a scheme for how the patterns worked. The digestion, I started to think about, right? How does that? So I tried to create something that had a sensibility or a metaphorical story that matched the, what the data was for. And I tried to deal with this idea of numbers. Either there's either a lot or a few. Um, and the idea that some things vary a lot, some things don't vary so much. So um, some of it's art science. You understand that? Art science? Absolutely. OK, great. <laughs> uh, so should we do, uh, Rachel, like one more? How, how's your, should we do like? One more, sure. Uh, I, 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 it's eight. On that. Okay, let's do one more. One more question. Okay. Uh, to, to continue on that question, I was asking myself, because your work is also aesthetically incredibly striking and really touched me a lot when I saw it in your house without knowing at all what it was about. It got me really moved. And so I was wondering, do you think that I was responding to the patterns of actually unconsciously or somehow photographing something that I didn't know I was seeing, but responding to it? And, and I look at a lot of art, and I make art, so you know, I'm really uh, attuned to that. And I, so my question to you was, do you, if you make a piece like one of your beautiful blue pieces or green pieces, and you feel like, do you sometimes feel like you want to cheat? Like, you know, there are too many reds on there, it would look better. <laughs> Why here? Or, or do you really stick with the data? Or are you, I mean, you still have a lot of freedom of how you express right. that. Right. Do people hear the question is, do I make it up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very successful as a result. <laughs> track of the data, I think about the data, and then as I make the piece, I try to make the piece reflect the sensibility of the data. I'm not counting, per se. Um, there's some, I've got some friends that are rules-based artists, and they stick with certain rules for how they make things. I, um, uh, art science is my best explanation. I mean, sometimes I, 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 you can tell I can't figure out how to, because sometimes I feel like I'm making up, but I'm not making up, because I've already spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours with the data. So sometimes it's seeped into me, 
and then I let it work it, itself out. Um, and I feel like I'm in a phase that I'm experimenting. I don't quite have the language thing down, but you know, I look at scientists and they, you know, they call themselves perfectly good researchers and they don't have the answers. They have a hypothesis and they're experimenting and they're in a phase where they're trying something out. And that's kind of where I feel I am. I, I haven't, it doesn't work completely yet. Uh, I'm on my way, I'm experimenting, but I can, but I can call myself a researcher. So, all right, thanks so much.